Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your weekly general taroscope with me, Raphael, from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for everyone. They are the general energies, trends and themes we're likely to be seeing playing out on the macrocosmic world, right, in terms of the... the wider world stage and on the microcosmic level for us personally. Uh, these are the three decks that I'll be using for us today and also this is always informed or infused with my intuitive message. So every week I go into my intuition and I ask what it is that we need to know, what is the prominent message that sort of or theme that runs through the week. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance and I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. Ooh. and they help us all on our path to our highest vibrational good. So this week our intuitive message is sometimes the simplest of things, right? Sometimes the simplest of things. This is kind of a week where I feel like we're going to be seeing some David and Goliath kind of stuff, right? Um, some, sometimes the simplest of things, right? So as an example, uh, if you know the Harry Potter story, what is the thing that actually conquers or saves the day in the end? It's love, right? It's really simple, but very powerful. I'll give you another example. So as many of you know, I have Middle Eastern heritage. So my uh, great, like on my mum's side, we've got Greek and Egyptian heritage right the way through um, with some Lebanese and uh, a little bit of Persian, like the further you go back. Anyway, all of that aside, <coughs> Sometimes there are certain meals, right, that we make, that we have, that we enjoy, that are considered like, you know, certainly in, in older years, you know, maybe not in the politically correctness gone mad era, but some of them are what we call are like a peasant's dinner. And when I tell you it's the tastiest stuff you've, like, do you know what I mean? Like fresh, beautiful, hot, tasty, yummy food that absolutely puts a smile on your face and is considered a, a peasant's dinner. Uh, this is like kind of you know when when you talk about like even with magic and craft stuff yeah you can do all your big fancy rituals and all the rest of it but in a pinch salt will protect your home and your body just as good as as anything else salt and a little bit of intent you can <laughs> you know what i mean like you can you can do a lot with that so this week the message really is it's not about more is more sometimes the simplest of things all right, now let's have a look at the destiny card for the week ahead from the Human Design Oracle deck. Ooh, nearly. And this week we have. Ooh. <laughs> of course, right? The Gate 29 and Perseverance. And so, yes, the message is about perseverance but it's also about ease, right? When you see a hummingbird, they make that stuff look so easy, right? The way they slip, zip, 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 zip. And when you slow it down, right? When they slow it down on a camera, you see like it, you can see just, and it absolutely hammers at it. This really is a message to continue what you're doing and to do it in a way that not only looks easy, but feels easy. This is about keeping on, keeping on, right? If you've been with me long enough, you will have heard me give this example many a time. When you see that strong man pull in the bus, right? The most strength is to get the bus moving. After that, it's just hand over hand, right? Any strong man, when you see them in the interview and they say like, oh, you know, how did you do it? And they say, it's just that initial push. After that, it's just one after the other, one after the other. Um, that's the message this week, right? And sometimes the simplest of things. We don't need more, we don't need bigger, we don't need more force, we just need the right ingredient, okay? Now, for our uh, direction cards, how do we best utilize this energy? How do we best tap into the energy of perseverance? How do we find the simplest of things or what may it be for us? All right, well, we've got the Ace of Swords. <laughs> All right, we've got the Two of Swords and we've got the Magician. Well, holy fudge sticks. Okay, All right, so this is in essence, a nod to what we call the supernal triangle. 
I could go on for that for about I could go on with that about an hour and I still probably wouldn't even touch the sides of what the supernal triangle truly is so I'm going to try to condense it and say this first of all what do we see the ace of swords the two of swords and the magician card the magician card if you know this if you've been with me long enough or if you're a tarot enthusiast you know that the magician is mercury this is all air this is all thought this is all mental energy and acuity 29 to the 9 gives you 11. Ace of Swords is a 1. Magician, the number 1. The Two of Swords, 2. Two Swords, 1. 1. Right? Look at what's happening here. 11, 11, anybody? Yes. Right? So this is basically a message to say on, <laughs> right? Like I've touched on the supernal triangle. And the reason I say this is because the Ace of Swords. You could liken that to full card energy for sure. The two of swords would be the high priestess and then we've got the third one that makes up that triad which would be the magician. So in a lot of, uh, there's just, uh, there's too much in it to, for me to go into but this is very, very powerful and it does suggest that in terms of our direction, how we tap into this perseverance, you know, I'm sure you've all heard the, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, can you see that on my watch? Look, look at the time, look at the time. Oh my gosh. It's 11.38, right? 11, what's three and eight? <laughs> 11. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're right, you literally just can't make this shit up sometimes. Like, uh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love it. I, <laughs> right, There's, I've always said, the day I stop being wowed by this stuff will be the day I stop doing it. Now, to bring it back to a bit more severity, sorry. Um, right, mind, the mental energy, and you will have heard many personal trainers say to you, your body will quit before your mind does. And that's because the true strength of character, power, will, all of that stuff, it exists in here. So how we tap into that perseverance, how we make it look easy, how we put some finesse on it, is to get strong in the mind, make sure that your decision and your direction is set. Know exactly where it is that you're going, what it is that you're trying to do. This is a time to get serious, all right? To be present, to be focused. This is not a week to waste with this kind of energy that's floating around as well. That's now on, that's on a sort of microcosmic level. On the macrocosmic level, we are very likely to see a big initiation of some sort, right? There's going to be a moment this week where someone rises to power, where some uh, injustice, potentially some injustice is uh, comes full circle. This could be one of those moments where we the people are finally, maybe not happy, but at least satisfied with uh, the fact that something needs, some wrong needs to be righted. And this week we are very likely to see that. So I'm intrigued by this. Now, you know, we will not talk about willpower. Yes, it's swords. Yes, the will originates in the mind. The wands and fire are what action your will, right? And there's a, it's only a subtle difference, but it is a difference. Now, that being said, uh, I will also say this does suggest on the microcosmic level as well, one more thing to, to be aware of some big part of our lives opens up right now and it will be different for everybody because obviously we're all different people on different paths so it will be interesting to see how this shows up now with the insight cards what's happening behind closed doors or round corners that we may not be aware of as yet but are uncovering through the cards what is the insight that we need to be knowledgeable of and aware of for this we have the Seven of Wands with the Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> yeah, all right. all right. So look, there's a battle to be fought of some kind. The Queen of Pentacles is an interesting one because this, uh, so the first thing that this suggests to me, the Queen of Pentacles, if you have a Virgo woman in your life or in any capacity, personal, professional, platonic, it doesn't matter which way, uh, you know, and personal can be familial, it doesn't always have to be intimate. Um, this does suggest that you may uh, either be called upon to aid or assist this person 
or um, this may be somebody that you have to butt heads with. It's a potential here. Now, that's just one way that we could look at this. Another way that we could see this is, on because the Queen of Pentacles also talks about material matters and proliferation. With that Magician card, it's like, are you prepared to fight for or persevere with something that you are birthing out into the world or something that you are preparing to share with the world? Are you willing to stand up for yourself and to speak the words that you need to if it means getting some sort of justice, some sort of vindication, some sort of... Um What's the word that I'm looking for? Yeah, some sort of vindication. It's almost like we're going to have to defend a viewpoint this for, this week. You know, in some way, shape or form, we have to stand up for ourselves. And on, that's on the microcosmic level. And you might need to stand up for something that you are that you believe in, right? Something that you really believe in. And then finally, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm laughing just because that double hit at the magician card. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's an interesting one. Um, and then finally with uh in terms of like the macrocosmic world like on the wider world stage i do wonder here if we see what is the equivalent and i use this sort of uh, as delicately as as possible i do wonder here if we see the equivalent of a public stoning of a woman this does suggest to me that the whole world is going to be in uproar or uprage or enraged about something to do with a woman who is considered powerful. Maybe it's something that she said. I am going to say with a double hit of the magician card, though, I almost want to say it's not so much that I believe this woman is innocent. I do, however, believe that something that she said that everybody seems to like, you know, it's like in the olden days, you know, like in the Bible when Jesus saved Mary Magdalene from being stoned to death because everyone thought she was a slut or a pagan, you know, whore or whatever it is that they called her. For me, I kind of look at this and it, it has like an echo of that. And I really feel that this is, it's like she's, she's whoever this woman is, she decided somewhere that she wasn't going to play ball, that she wasn't going to cave to some sort of pressure um, or, you know, do as she was told, etc. And somebody spins the story for it and everyone goes in for her. I'm quite disinclined to buy into the hype around this, but we'll have to see how it shapes up. With that said, I wish you all an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic week. Remember, it's all here, right? I'm quite lucky because look at this bulbous head. I've got a big brain in there. <laughs> With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up for you. And also, if you see anything on the wider world stage that echoes this, share, share and share. Thank you so much to all of you that do. I love it when you do that because it shows that we're doing the right work, right? With that said, take care and I'll see you soon.